welcome once again to another audiobook blast with yours truly Neil Gardner coming to you live and gorgeously in the well, Neil Gardner revision. I hope you're enjoying it. It's a, it's a new technology. We're working on it. It'll get better, I promise you. Uh, and uh, it's another audiobook blast in association with the lovely fine folk at the Audiobook Creators Alliance. If you have anything to do with creating audiobooks here in the UK, then join up. It's completely for free uh, and you can add your voice to ours and, and help us make things better for everybody, uh, including the listeners, of course, who we love. Thank you very much. Uh, what's today all about? Today is about CD slates. What's a CD slate? I hear you ask. Well, you may never have had to do one in the modern age because pretty much everything's digital only now. Uh, but occasionally, CDs still need to be made of a title. Uh, there are a couple of publishers who do uh, do audio CDs through their websites. They also supply the library market and uh, the market for the partially sighted and blind. Uh, and the CD slate is there to help the uh, listener know exactly which CD they put in their machine. They might not be able to see it uh, or read it on the casing or the CD. They might not have Braille on it. Uh, so we say, uh, disc one, end of disc one. Uh, and um, so occasionally you'll come here maybe or to another studio and you'll be asked to record CD slates. Now these are really important to do them in a certain way because you're going to be given a long list of basically disc one, end of disc one, disc two, end of disc two, up to whatever. It could be 10, 15, 20, it could be longer. So you're going to be tempted to do them like a football list. You're going to be tempted to go uh, like this. You're going to want to go disc one, end of disc one, disc two, end of disc two, disc three. Like it's a list, like we're listening to you reading a list. But the listeners are only going to hear them about once every hour to an hour and 20 minutes. So what you actually need to do is you need to do them as flat as possible. This is a really interesting exercise because no one can really get it right the first time. I still struggle with it uh, and I've done it tons of times and produced hundreds of them. So uh, for you as a narrator or you as a producer, this is what we need. We need flat every time. It's really hard to do. So I'll have a go at it. Right, here we go. Disc one. End of disc one. Disc two. End of disc two. Disc three. End of disc three. Oh, that's really hard to do. Imagine going up to 30 or something. So that's what you need to do. Now, do it at the start of your session. Don't do it at the end or in the middle or just before lunchtime. Do it at the start. If it doesn't quite work, you can do it again later. But I always use it as a really useful warming up exercise. Uh, and uh, it's good to get out of the way. It's the boring bit. It's the tough bit. Uh, it's also a nice bonding exercise if you've got a producer or engineer to work with. Um, but it's really good for warming up. I'd say do your intro and outro slates as well. So your credits, sometimes they're called billboards. Get all that stuff, technical stuff, done at the start of a session. You can always redo it if you think your voice has massively changed by the end. Um, but try and get all that technical stuff done at the start. You'll warm yourself up. It's a good way of just getting a session up and running. But remember, you're not doing uh, a list in so much as everything has to be interesting from one thing like sine wave and down again. You're doing flat intros and outros to discs uh, that have no relevance to the other intros and outros. So there you go. See these slates. Another audiobook blast. Hope that's been interesting and fun and informative and other F words are available. We'll see you very soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.